one day when Jesus is coming back, he's going to separate the goats from the sheep. And I can see it actually starting to happen now because we are living in an end time and it's going really fast. So much darkness out, out there, so much deception. And when people don't know or they have wrong interpretation of what it is to be a Christian and what it is to be called by God to be a follower of Christ, then the Holy Spirit will separate before Jesus comes the goats from the sheep. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? And a sheep, the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice and another voice they do not follow. So a sheep is someone in the body of Christ who hear and understand the voice of Christ on the inside. They are living so close to Christ that they know how to discern the voices inside of them. They know which voice is from God and which voice is from the enemy and which voice who is from yourself. And they're following the shepherd, Jesus Christ, wherever he goes. They have laid down their lives. In Matthew 25, when Jesus speaks about how he will uh, separate the sheep from the goats, he make an illustration about when he was hungry and people gave him food, when he was naked and somebody gave him clothes, when he was a stranger and people took him in to their houses and so on. It's to be doers, as I said the last time, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not here to quote scripture to one another and not living by them. We have to understand what we are quoting. And I think many people don't. They're quoting, they have another strange interpretation about what it is to be called by God. To be called by God is not you at the throne on top of a pulpit with a crowd of people is not you in the center at all the bible says that you shall die from yourself so that christ can be glorified through you and your life and your acts and many times we see the opposite we see people preachers people who have ministries who are lifting up themselves glorifying themselves want to have honor from people and it's the opposite that Jesus is talking about to walk the way with Christ as I have experienced is a very narrow walk where it requires of me a lot of sacrifices a lot of persecution, a lot of loneliness, a lot of misunderstanding from people, lies, gossip, people rejecting me. I mean, this is all from people in the body of Christ. This is not from the world. Very, very little. But it's among my own that I experienced my walk with God, how narrow it is and I understand what I didn't understood when I was a little girl when we said that narrow is the way to to the kingdom of to the kingdom of God and now I get it it is a narrow way it's a lonely way it's a lot of sacrifices but you see when you live like a sheep when you live close to the father's heart and you search your heart every day you pray like david to search your heart to see if there's any wicked thing in your heart to not be self-deceived to be right with god all the time and to have that humbleness to pray over your own life 
so you are not deceived. And then to bless your enemies, to pray for people that curse you, who doesn't understand what they are doing, as Jesus says. Forgive them because they don't understand what they are doing. That's the attitude you get when you have been living in the Word of God and living in a love relationship to Jesus Christ. It's not about me. It's, it's not about me being popular. It's not about me being millionaire. It's not about my life being, you know, all rich, having the greatest house, the biggest car. Why? Why do you want a great crowd? Is it for yourself to glorify, lift up you? Or is it to glorify Jesus Christ? Is it for um, your flesh that you want all these material things? I don't think some of that teaching goes in line with what the Word of God says when we, when we are called to reign with Christ, we're also called to suffer with Him. And I think that is a wrong goal to have a, a vision to be a millionaire to have a vision to have a, a big house i am not nothing against a nice house don't misunderstand me but we, if that is the goal in your life that everything has to be so big and look so impressive to people around you then i believe you have missed something in the word of god because in my bible it says that Every day I take my cross up and follow Him. I believe that God can bless our lives with things, but it's not going to be our goal to live a luxury life. It's not our goal. Our goal should be that we should treat our neighbor as God wants them to be treated. We should live in unconditional love to our neighbor to our sister and our brother regardless of what they are doing to us if the whole world get up and talk bad about you you still have so much of jesus on the inside that you know what to do in that situation you have been so much with jesus that you know the answer to every difficult situation and attack you're facing you know what Jesus would have done in this and that situation. He would have forgiven them. He would have prayed for them. He would, he would have shut his mouth and not said anything bad. You see, when you start gossiping on people, for example, that is sin. That is a sin because it's linked to witchcraft. What is witchcraft? Witchcraft if, is, is something you do through your mouth that you are releasing demons when you are speaking gossip or bad about other people who can't defend themselves. And you are painting their image so dark for the world and trying to destroy their reputation with lies. That is witchcraft. And the Bible says that that is sin. I mean, we all did gossip from time to time. We all fall into that sin where we've been talking about someone who has hurt us. I can understand. But what we need to do is to repent. Repent. We have the Holy Spirit. He is our lawyer. He is the one close to our heart. And He is there to point at Jesus, he's there to point at our sins when we do sins, so we can very fast repent. I had to repent for speaking wrong about people. I had to repent, and that is where God's grace is so awesome. We're in that moment where we are living in forgiveness to ourselves and forgive our neighbors and ask for forgiveness 
the grace will come in the same second and forgive and cleanse us so we are white as snow but I want to tell you something when you walk this path with Christ and you have de decided to follow Jesus and you feel you have a calling don't look after glamour don't look at the fleshly things seek for the lower things go after the lost people don't try to be a star in the eyes of the world that's what the enemy lifts up he lifts up people to honor people to worship people to create idols out of people there's only one idol for me, and that is God who I worship. I don't want to worship money. I don't want to worship looks. I don't want to worship things. I mean, I walked through Beverly Hills the other day, and it's, you know, it's fascinating. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I mean, I walked through all these designer shops and I see people buying for hundreds of thousands of dollars every day there and driving around in the most expensive cars on this planet and everything there is so lux luxurious but yet you know one day when this when this life is over we all are going to be put in a coffin we can take any of those jewels, those clothes, those shoes, those houses with us. When we come up to God or in the judgment day, we're all gonna stand equal before him in the judgment day. So you can't take with you all that thing you have stocked up here on earth. So what's the point of having so much focus on stuff? on materialism what God wants us to focus on is how our hearts can be more like him how his image can be seen among us here on earth before he come and get us he is desperate to show himself to the world people and he wants to use us he wants to use our mouth our way of beings, our motives, because the world is watching us. They're watching every move we take and they don't want us to be similar to them. They, I think many people, if they see that we are very similar, they think that, wow, they're not different than us. In one way, it could speak to them, it could be a doorway for you to reach people, but on the other hand, we should stand out we should be different you see we are light and we are salt in this world so we are planted in this world by god to do something to influence the people we have around us and to for god to open up people's hearts so they can be saved so they can be healed restored delivered that's why jesus came to set the captives free to save us so we can have eternal life there is no other god to heaven except through jesus christ it's not buddha who is the way to god it's not any other god it's not krishna it's not, not any other God that is a way to God except for Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the door. He is the light. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So this time is very deceitful where many people in the body of Christ are being deceived because they don't know how it is to be a Christian. They don't know the important things of understanding what time we are living in. So if you are lukewarm and you're in the church, you will easily be deceived. 
because the new age for example is coming in to the churches people are doing something called holy yoga that doesn't exist it's no such thing as holy yoga it's a deception because you're doing hinduism and when when people are not preaching about this the people in the body of christ they lack knowledge so they are blinded and they will be deceived like the revelation says in the last day many will be deceived many will be deceived of leaders and of the foot people because they lack knowledge and they they buy it they think it is the same because this the world the god of this world has blinded the eyes of the unbelievers but also start to blind the eyes of the believers because the enemy wants his kingdom here he wants his kingdom to rule here on earth and he wants as many as possible of the body of Christ to be deceived into his kingdom to compromise with the Word of God to do all these yoga things to think like new age people think I mean you should be awake you should understand that there is a difference between being a goat and a sheep and you should live by the Bible the Bible is the only book the Word of God is the only book that tells the truth people this is the truth there is no such thing that there are many other ways that you can just open up for any other spiritual book I mean if it's not according to the Word of God throw it away I'm serious and I'm more radical now than I ever been because I see the deception in the body of Christ I see how serious time we are living in and I see how little how little acts that are happening among us of love it's lacking love I mean where are all the the people who love Jesus Christ who are doing the works of God to watch each other I know they exist I meet them from time to time but it's so much jealousy out there and gossip and pride and lukewarmness deception because people are not living after the Word of God they forget where they come from they forget what Jesus says and if they face persecution they fight in the flesh and we don't fight against flesh we fight against principalities it's spiritual it's a spiritual war that is happening on this planet right now and you need to know if you are a sheep or a goat and you have to decide to be the sheep so you can start hearing the voice of God who will teach you who will correct you who will love you and who will give you that your true identity I'm telling you the enemy is coming after the identity of Christ in you and me he's shaking that he wants you to doubt on the Word of God that there are other ways to the kingdom of God than through Jesus that is a lie that is not true there is only one way there is only one God who gave his son Jesus Christ who died for all our sins and who resurrected the third day and gave us eternal life so I just want you to know this is very serious but it is the truth that there actually is a hell hell do exist we cannot only talk about heaven because not everybody is going to heaven there are people on this planet who are going to hell 
and our job as safe people is to to win so many as possible for Christ so they are not going to hell but there is a place called hell it's not only heaven it's heaven and hell and maybe this is shocking you up I mean it's a word that many people are very very scared of and you may think that I'm all judgmental right now but I'm just speaking what the Word of God says and I can't hold something back that is very serious. It has to do with our lives, ending of our lives. Where will you spend eternity? In, in heaven or in hell? And many preachers doesn't want to speak about this subject because they don't want to rock the boat, so to speak. They don't want to be called names. They don't want to have the persecution that word will maybe activate. But you see, when you live for Christ, you're also ready to die for him. You're ready to go all the way for him, regardless of people are hating you, rejecting you, leaving you, calling you names, putting you in prison, your heart is Christ's heart and you're willing to go all the way with him because you're a sheep, you're not a goat. A goat is somebody who looks like they are your sister or your brother. They may be quoting things, they go to church, but they are a goat. They are not a sheep because they are against you, Jesus says. If you're not for me, you are against me. There. You have the division right there. So those people that are not for you, who are persecuting you, talking bad about you, making problems for you, coming against you, they are against Jesus too. If you live as God has called you to live. So we are followers of Christ. We are followers of him. And that way is narrow. But it will be worth it, people. It will be worth it. Imagine those crowns we're going to get in heaven. If we are willing to suffer with him. If we are willing to be persecuted for his name's sake. Because you don't live for yourself when you have given your life to Christ. You live for Him. Your flesh has died. It's not about what you want. It's what He wants. Every day we should ask ourselves, God, what do you want for my life today? What do you want me to do? Show me, lead me to people I can make an impact on. Somebody I can influence with your anointing over my life. Show me those people, lead me to those people. It's not about me, it's about him, people. He is the resurrection and the life. And he lives inside of us and he wants to show his greatness, his love, his compassion to this world before it goes under people. So let's Listen to the shepherd's voice and follow him wherever he leads and be willing to pay any price because you know that you love him and he loves you and your life will continue into eternity. Amen.